Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a mystery coming from our own galaxy, related to some sort of an unusual energy emanating from a region where we didn't really expect to see anything. And it's also maybe something that will take us closer to answering once and for all what exactly is this mysterious dark matter. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. <laughs> And to begin this, I wanted to show you um, a picture that was published by NASA, um, I think about nine years ago, when we discovered this unusual formation around our galaxy. So if you were to look at our galaxy from this sort of side, or actually this is a much more appropriate orientation, you would see um, a very strange and very unusual formation right there. So these unusual bubble-like formations are today called Fermi bubbles. We've detected them um, pretty much completely by accident, but we've known about them for roughly around nine years now, but we still don't really know what they are. NASA actually has tried to study them very thoroughly and discovered that there's a lot of um, radiation coming out of them, specifically things like X-rays and more recently gamma rays, and um, unfortunately there is no good explanation for neither how they were formed, what they are, what's in them, and what's causing this unusual radiation. We just know that they exist and that they are really large and that they're out there. And they're clearly connected to the center of our galaxy somehow, so maybe the supermassive black hole in the middle, one day either absorbed some sort of a really massive star that emitted these unusual formations, or maybe the uh, bubbles are somehow related to the astrophysical jets that you see here that were much larger before and then somehow dissipated the material in the formation that we see today. In other words, we don't really know. There is a lot of speculation, there is obviously a lot of attempts to explain these, but we just can't really explain what's happening. And one of the biggest mysteries in regards to these Fermi bubbles came from the Ice Cube Neutrino Detector that you see right here, this is in Antarctica. That's probably one of the most sophisticated detectors we've ever built. And it's this huge structure, as you can see, it's uh, several kilometers long and is able to detect neutrinos coming um, from pretty much any direction striking our planet Earth. And very high energy neutrinos were detected coming from this region, uh, which means that there is a lot of really high energy interaction with something. Now it could be some sort of really fast moving particles, but it also could be something more mysterious. Something we've been looking for um, for quite a while now, the mysterious dark matter. But let's not rush into things and briefly talk about the actual scientific papers. So the first paper that was recently published and you can see on the screen right here and find it in the description below, literally talks about the detection of a lot of unexplainable gamma rays coming from the Fermi bubbles. So the energy that was created, but we just don't really know what made it. And it's been sort of like that for a long time now. And despite their best efforts to try to explain what's causing them, the scientists behind this paper have no good explanation. We just know that they're there, we just don't know what's causing them. And surprisingly, within a few weeks of that paper, someone else published this, where they actually do look at several unexplainable gamma rays and um, try to explain them as this mysterious dark matter. And this paper here doesn't actually even talk about the Fermi bubbles, it talks about other galaxies out there. Now, the reasoning behind this here is that in order for us to detect the dark matter, we obviously can't just look at the galaxy because there's a lot of interference here, a lot of other sources of various radiation. So we would have to look basically um, away from the galaxies in the so-called galactic halos or possibly even just in the middle of dark space. And today most of the dark matter studies um, focus on three main uh, ways of detecting it. Either by directly trying to create dark matter using the um, so-called colliders, basically these really large facilities that try to collide particles at really high velocities, or by looking at various effects that dark matter has on regular matter. But then there is a third way, and that's of course um, related to the uh, particles that might be produced after the interaction with dark matter. In other words, these so-called secondary particles. A good example of a typical secondary particle is when, for example, the cosmic ray comes in from outer space, it starts striking uh, the particles in the upper atmosphere, and the interaction starts producing this cascade of various secondary particles, including things like gamma rays, that we can then detect back on Earth. 
In other words, the cosmic ray itself is sort of destroyed in the upper atmosphere and it's the effects of cosmic rays that we feel down here and can even detect using things like Geiger counters. And so very similar secondary particles could actually be created by dark matter as well. And this is exactly what the scientists behind this paper did. They made an assumption that secondary gamma rays could be produced by dark matter, certain types of dark matter. And they started looking around the night skies, or actually no, they basically looked at all data um, of us looking at the night skies and identified several um, sources of gamma rays that were either in the middle of nowhere or could not possibly be explained. In other words, they looked at things like halos, galactic halos, or things like just middle of dark space somewhere out there, or regions very close to different dwarf galaxies that are known to have a lot of dark matter, and they tried to identify unexplainable gamma ray phenomena. And having identified pretty much almost 500 various unknown gamma ray phenomena, they then focused on four specific ones that they believed maybe were created by the mysterious dark matter. These four events were just the right um, type of energy, they also were in just the right position and could be classified as the so-called light dark matter particle. In other words, they were able to show that certain types of gamma ray emissions could potentially be dark matter. And it just so happens that we have very unusual gamma ray emissions right here and we can't seem to explain them. But don't get confused, this is not to say that this is definitely dark matter here and that this is what's causing these unusual gamma rays. We still need to investigate these gamma rays in a little bit more detail and compare them to the results from the other paper. But based on what these two papers have discovered and based on what we see right now, there is a slight chance that we might have finally discovered these signs of this mysterious dark matter that we just couldn't find before. In other words, it could have been always here, we were just not looking at the right thing. And what I really hope will happen in the next few months are a lot of follow-up papers that will hopefully explain the type of gamma rays we've detected for coming from our own galaxy and also maybe connect these gamma rays to the paper uh, that describes them as potential dark matter discovery. In other words, we would really like to find out if this is what we're seeing. Are we actually seeing the dark matter interacting with matter and producing these gamma rays? And if so, great, we finally found it. If not, what's really causing these uh, unusual formations and unusual gamma ray and x-ray emissions from these bubbles? I mean, something has got to be happening there and we just need to find a way to explain what's going on. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with even more mysteries to solve and even less theories to try to explain them. But that's of course the beauty of modern science and also why there are so many scientific discoveries pretty much every single day. If you were to look at the amount of papers that come out in this particular field in astrophysics, it is just mind-blowing. And that really makes me hopeful that, well, first of all, gives me a lot to talk about on the channel, but also that we keep looking, we keep trying to find new things. And as a species, we're definitely really eager to discover new ideas and try to find new solutions to old problems. Well, anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. We'll definitely talk about this topic in more detail later on, but for now, that's really it. Anyway, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and space out, and as always, bye-bye.